What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Independent Experience. I'm Indy XP and this is your morning market wake up call for Thursday, September 3rd, 2020. Let's go ahead and jump on into the markets and see where we're going to be starting today off at. Gold is down currently at 1940.79. Silver has seen some significant losses the last 24 hours, currently at 27.21, giving us a ratio of 71.32. Platinum is down currently at 911.81, but palladium, something's happening with palladium. It has had a huge jump since yesterday evening, currently at 23.82.61. In other metals markets, rhodium is up $200, currently at $12,200. Copper is down several cents, currently at $303. Did have a special request that we add a few extra metals to the morning market update. So I'm going to find this lineup changes slightly here. Nickel is currently at $6.89 pound. Aluminum is down a penny at 79 cents. Zinc is at 114 and lead is at 88 cents. We are going to go ahead and drop uranium. It is down today. It's down a dime. If you guys want to continue hearing about uranium prices, let me know. I don't know anybody that trades in uranium. The only reason why we had it on here to begin with is because I'd bought some uranium mining stocks a while back and we added that in because they thought it'd be fun. If you guys want it, let me know. If not, we're going to drop it. Carrying on, barrels of crude oil were down significantly. They are currently at 40.41 a barrel. We had a record-breaking day on Wall Street again yesterday. The Dow Jones was up significantly at it was up 454 points at 29,100.5. The NASDAQ was uh, set a record yesterday, breaking 12,000 points. It was up 116 at 12,056.44. And the S&P 500, of course, was closing at a record up 54 points at 3580.84. Dow futures for today are pointing down, so we do expect to see a little bit of a drop once the bell rings here in about an hour and 45 minutes. Bitcoin, woo, a little roller coaster it does. It's actually just kind of flat today. Uh, Bitcoin is down slightly from yesterday's video. It's at 11,238.51. And if you happen to exchange the Utah gold back, those are currently at 327. In today's video, we are reviewing an article from the great Niels Christensen over at Kitco. This is from an interview he did with um, the CEO of Kootenay Silver titled, Silver is now trading like a currency, look for higher prices. Silver has seen, a, has seen significant momentum in the last two months as it is now outperforming gold. One mining executive said that all-time highs are not out of reach for the precious metal with this strong tailwind. In an interview with Kitco News on the sidelines of the Mines and Money Online Connect Global Virtual Mining Conference, kind of a long name, they should probably shorten that down to the MMOCGVMC. That seems a little bit better. Anyway, I digress. Jim McDonald, CEO of Kootenay Silver, said that unprecedented loss monetary po loose monetary policy around the world could continue to drive precious metals higher. He added that silver's all-time high of around $50 isn't even the full target. I don't think $50 silver is out of reach at all. I firmly believe it's going to happen. I don't know what the timing is going to be, he said, and I think it's going to overshoot the old price and maybe be quite a bit higher. We've been waiting a long time for it to break that major psychological $20 barrier. Yes, we have, and once it broke it, it shot right past it. McDonald said that he could see the gold-silver ratio falling to 30 points in an overcorrective move uh, after hitting an all-time high of around 125 in March. 
I think we all remember those times pretty, pretty sourly. It's hard to believe that was six months ago now. Uh, that kind of ratio and the silver price would be close to 100, he said. Uh, not only is the silver market expected to rally higher, but McDonald said that he expects market conditions to sustain higher prices. Although weak industrial demand was weighing on silver at the start of the year, using, uh, causing the precious metal to underperform gold, McDonald said that those factors are now being outweighed by the massive stimulus measures undertaken to support the global economy devastated by the COVID-19 pandemic. We're getting to see silver start to trade like it's a currency as well. That may be the overriding factor here in driving the silver price, not the economy, he said. McDonald added that the rally in gold and silver has created a transformational shift in the marketplace. He explained that only a few years ago, Kootenay Silver had to beg for every investment dollar it could get. Fast forward to today, we announced our financing in the morning and the book was closed about an hour later on $5 million and we upsized it to seven. So it's very, very different environment, he said. Kootenay Silver is one of the, uh, has one of the biggest portfolios of silver assets in Mexico. McDonald said that their focus now with their new capital is to continue to de-risk de -risk their projects, including their cornerstone project, the Columbia Silver Property. And that comes to us from Niels Christensen at Kitco. So, wow, 30 to 1 gold-silver ratio. That was the big thing that I wanted to key in on that article. Um, what happens to stackers with a 30 to 1 ratio? Do we all end up getting out of silver? And it drives the, I mean, what happens at silver pricing at that point? Obviously, us that hold silver, if the ratio is 30 to 1, it, the, the temptation is way too great to trade it for gold. At that point, uh, even at you know fifty to one, um, I'm going to be looking at possibly you know trading in. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, it's a kind of unprecedented. So, not sure where it's going to go. You know, uh, Mr. McDonald here seems to think that we're heading towards thirty to one gold uh, silver ratio. But uh, be anxious to hear what you guys have to say on the topic. Let me know down in the comments below, guys. I do greatly appreciate every single one of you. And you yeah, happen to appreciate old Indy XP. Oh, oh boy. Why don't you go ahead and pony up the $35 it takes to get yourself into the El Fuego de Oro Pay Dirt Challenge. This is a lot of fun, guys. What we've done, we mixed it. If you guys aren't familiar with it, we got a lot of new faces here on the channel. If you guys aren't familiar with this, $35 a bag, we've made up five pounds of pay dirt. We added uh, seven and a half grams of gold, and one of these bags does have uh, two and a half grams added to it. Um, once we sell all 20 of the bags, uh, we will um, uh, oh, have a painting party. We'll open them all up, and uh, you guys will see who the big winner is. So it's a lot of fun. If you guys haven't been there for the live streams before, we have a we have a blast. It's a lot of fun. Usually only last a few hours. And uh, yeah, everybody gets to see what everybody wins. So uh, if you want to get in on the action, make sure you PayPal me, IndieGuy711 at gmail.com. $35, friends and family, and you will be entered. We've only got six bags left to sell, guys, before we're moving into the panning party planning process. That needs some initials as well. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Email me. Feel free to email me and let me know if you guys got anything that you need. I, of course, like I said before, do greatly appreciate every single one of you. If you haven't appreciated Old Indie XP, buy the bags. But go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me right there. It helps me defeat YouTube algorithms. If you happen to be new, and this is your first time checking out one of these videos, make sure you hit that subscribe and jingle jingle bell right there in the corner. Big bong so you can stay notified of when all the latest and greatest content comes out. If you want to catch up on the back catalog, there's going to be a box that appears right in this area right here. Make sure you click on that here in just a few seconds at the end of this video so you can start catching up. I've been Indy XP from The Independent Experience, and I'm here again to remind you, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find your pockets heavy.